here you've got your hitch and your A-frame. So when you're going to hook the van up, you'll bring your tow ball back, have this lever up, tow ball will drop in. Um, you'll have this wee button here will pop up and you'll get a green ring around there so that way you know that the tow ball's in securely. And then you put your secondary lever down so the Alco brake pads in here will squeeze in and hold that tow ball nice. Um, you've got your breakaway cable so you can either wrap that around the tow ball or hook that onto the D-shackle of your vehicle. And now this is designed that for some reason if this hitch ever came off your breakaway cable will pull and snap off, hence the name, and it'll put your handbrake on and that's just so your van doesn't roll anywhere down the road. Um, you've got your 7 pin trailer plug for your lights and this van is also fitted with a safety chain. On your A-frame you've got your handbrake, so just like a car, pull down for off, pull up for on. Your jockey wheel, so you can wind that up and down to get to the right height for your tow ball. Once you've got your tow ball hooked up, what you can do is, it might be a bit hard to see, but there's some grooves down here. Um, and so the arms of the jockey wheel slide into those grooves so you can get the wheel up as high as possible. And then you undo this lever and pull the whole mechanism up into your A-frame with your wheel facing the back. And then when you arrive at your destination and you go to unhook the van, you unwind this, drop, drop your jockey wheel down, put your handbrake on, come to your hitch, pull up that secondary lock, then you have to lift and hold this lever while you use your jockey wheel to wind it off the vehicle. If you don't hold this lever up, it's not going to release the tow ball, it's just going to pull your vehicle up with the van. Um, in here you've got a plunging brake system, so it just plunges in and out as you brake. When you go to reverse, unlike the Kiwi vans, there's no levers or anything you need to throw. Um, so you'll reverse, you'll get a little bit of resistance and then the brakes will release and you'll just be able to reverse as normal. Just behind your A-frame you've got your front locker, so that'll lift all the way up like so. So you've got space to store two 9 kilo gas bottles. Um, the connection is just like a standard barbecue connection. Um, you've also got a wee shut off valve here if you did want to close the gas off. You've got your leg winder, so on all four corners of the van is a stabiliser leg, so you just use this to wind them up and down. You've got your power cord um, for when you're at a campground. Now these front lockers are open to the elements, so as you're driving along they're going to get dust um, and a bit wet in there. So don't store anything in there you don't want getting dusty or dirty. Um, and also these front lockers have sort of a payload of about 20 kilos. So you don't want to overload the front of this um, because if it's too heavy it will affect the way that the caravan tows. So just on the front of your offside here, you've got this wee bit here. This is where the pump for your fresh water clips into. So you just hold that lever back and push that into there. Um, you do have to give them a bit of a wriggle because they are plastic on plastic um, and then you just release that lever. You've got your fresh water barrel so obviously you fill it up with water and then you just pop your pump end as far as close to the bottom as you can get and then you've just got a wee dust cover there. Um, once you've got that all set up you can then go inside the van and turn your pump on. So just behind your fresh water intake um, you've got this cover here so you just want to unclip that so that is a travel cover for the gas exhaust so when you're running your water heater on gas um, so only take this cover off when you are using the water heater on gas otherwise keep it on especially when you're traveling um, because dust can get into these vents because it's nice and warm in there spiders will climb in and make webs and that just makes it really hard for your water heater to ignite properly on gas so only take this off if you are using the water heater on gas. Put that on and just give it a wee bit of a knock at the bottom just so you know that's nice and secure so it won't fly off. Got your battery locker behind that so that opens up like so. So you've got your 12 volt battery in there. Um, you don't really have to do anything there, it sort of does its own thing. Um, just off to the side here, so this is where you plug in for your mains power. 
you'll see on here there's a wee groove which corresponds to the one on the van so it can only go on the one way. Um, so you just hold that cap back, wiggle it on, release that cap to lock it in and then you do have a wee groove in the locker here just so you can still lock it um, so no one can get in there and it keeps the weather out. And then just behind your mains power cord this is the isolator key for your motor mover. So when you do want to use the motor mover, you just need to come in here, turn it sort of 180 degrees, um, and that just livens up the 12 volt for your motor mover. Uh, so once you've finished using your motor mover, just make sure you come in and do turn this switch off, um, otherwise you will start to slowly drain the 12 volt from your battery. So this wee locker up here, this is the fresh water filler for your toilet. So generally, depending on the model, they take about 8 to 10 litres of water in here. Um, it is more of a visual reference, so when you start to get water in this trough, you know that it's full. Um, there is a pink toilet chemical that goes in here that helps with smell, but also lubricates the seals in your pump. And then just below that... <laughs> ready? Just below that, you've got your toilet cassette, so you lift up this handle and pull it out. Now anything in this circle is operated within the van, so you don't need to touch that. Um, when you go to empty this, you turn your spout out and untwist the cap. Now if the cap is quite hard to get off, you do have a wee air release button at the end here, just to help you get that off. So you take that to your dump station, empty that. Um, the cap does have wee measurements on it and that is for the blue toilet chemical that goes in your cassette. So that chemical helps break down everything and it also helps with the smell again. Now your kitty does have wee wheels on it so if you just push this lever up and pull it out you've got your wee wheel away handle and that just, just make sure that that's slotted back behind those grey tabs once you're done. Once that's all empty, bring it back to the van, slide it in, and just make sure it clips in behind there. And then just up above your caddy on this wee white shelf, you've got a wee um, valve here. So what that is for is that is so you can empty the fresh water in your toilet. So if you are going to be storing the van over winter and not using it for a while, it is a good idea to just take this out, open up this bung and empty the flushing water from your toilet. It just stops that pump being submerged for a long period of time when not being used um, and it also helps prevent any sort of frost damage as well. So just down here below your toilet um, you've got the outlet for your grey water. So when you want to empty your grey water so to connect your caddy, you just open this wee cap. Now there is a wee valve here, um, so that opens up the grey water line and then closes it, just if you do want to keep it closed when you're travelling, or when you go to empty the caddy if you've still got some water in that line. So you just pop this end into here and that just clips in, and then you clip this side onto your grey water caddy. Like so. Uh, so you want to make sure this valve is open so that your grey water caddy is going to fill. And then just next to that, which you also want to have open, is you've got your wee breather here. So that just helps all the air escape while the grey water caddy fills. And then when you go to empty your grey water caddy, just turn that valve off at the van. Also turn these two valves off so you're not going to have grey water going everywhere. There is a gauge at the top so you can keep an eye on when it is getting full. Um, so you can disconnect this, roll it to your dump station. Underneath this lid here you do have this wee spout. So you can screw that onto the end so it just gives you a nice direct pour when you go to empty your grey water. So this down here by your wheels, this is your motor mover. So when you've got to wherever you're going and you just want to use your mover, you've got this handle here, so that goes on here. Um, you've then got to rotate right round 
it does get a bit stiff and you'll hear it click that means the mover is properly on your wheel now there is no connecting bar on this mover so you do have to do this on both sides of your van so once you've got your mover on you can go in take your handbrake off turn that isolator switch on you've then got your wee remote here so you just press and hold those buttons to turn it on it's quite hard to see there's some wee green lights at the top that'll flash so you know the remote's on um, and then these buttons at the top um, are the speed of the mover so you can have it quite slow or quite quick um, and then you've just got the directions so the remote it's kind of goes upside down so this point is your a-frame so you've got forward reverse and then left and right and forward and also reverse once you've got the motor move the van where you want it go and put your handbrake on you then come and take the motor mover off both sides like so and then go and turn that isolator switch off and then you're good to go so inside your door um, this is your main sort of control panel so you just come in and turn that on so it gives you the time and the degrees and those bits and pieces uh, if you press this tick you'll get a fresh water tank um, which isn't valid because this one doesn't have an onboard tank press it again um, it just gives you the current voltage of your van's battery you can get the van and your vehicle wired up with a 12 pin trailer plug so then you can also check your vehicle's battery and then that's just back to the home um, these buttons on the right hand side are for if you want to play with the settings you know adjust the time the date those sorts of things um, on the left here so this is to turn your water pump on and then turn that back off so once you've got all your fresh water set up come in turn that on if you haven't used the van for a while you will have to open your taps up a bit and just let that air get through and then that pump will pressurize uh, this top button here is for the lights above the cupboard in your bedroom um, this one is for the lights above the cupboard in the kitchen and then this button right at the bottom is for your 12 volt so your 12 volt is currently on and then you can just turn that off if you don't need it so on your opposite wall here we've got the mains power control for your room heater and the gas control for your water heater. So for your room heater on mains power you've got this outer circle so you can select 2000 watts, 1000 watts right at the bottom or 500 watts and then inside you've just got a wee thermometer from 1 right around to 9 and then just back to that circle to turn it off. Um, when you turn it on you should get a wee green light um, if you don't get the green light it's probably because you haven't got the mains power switch on but we'll show you that in a moment um, so just below is your water heater on gas so you just turn that outer ring to the gas symbol and again you'll get the wee green light you'll also hear a click up the front of the van that's the water heater trying to ignite um, and then you've got your thermostat from 30 degrees right round to 70 if you do get a red light like we've got now, um, it could be one of three things. Either you haven't taken that travel cover off, there's no gas in your gas bottles, or you haven't connected the gas up properly. So just turn that off, go and check those three things, and then come back in, turn it on, and you should be good to go. So this is your actual room heater unit here. So on the left here, this is to control your fan. So to the A is automatic, so there's a wee temperature sensor in here, um, so the fan will just kick in and out when it needs to. Um, and the centre is off, and to your left is continuous. Um, and then you've just got the wee fan speed from 1 right around to 5. Um, so when you've got the fan on, the heat will duct through some of the ducting throughout the van. Um, if you just turn the fan off, the heat will just primarily come out of the front here. On your right hand side, um, this is to operate the heater on gas, so you just turn this knob, probably right up to sort of 10, you'll hear it start to tick, so you just press this button down as your purge button, and then that ticking is the igniter trying to ignite on the gas. Um, you've got a wee viewing window down here, so about this far down and about 25mm in, there'll be a wee viewing 
window the same size as this. Um, so when you're holding it down, you'll see sort of a blue flame. And then when you let go, when it stops clicking and you let it go, it should kick into a nice bright yellow flame. And then you can adjust your temperature from there. When you want to turn the gas off, just turn it right back past the zero a little bit. And you'll just feel it sort of click there. And that's when you know it's off. So right underneath your front seating um, next to the door, um, this is your RCDs and your MCBs. Um, so that, that's where those are if you ever need them. Um, but down the bottom here, so this switch is for your battery charger. Um, so when you have that on, whenever you're connected to mains power, it will trickle feed your battery. Um, in the middle here is for your water heater on mains power. So if you ever want to run it on mains power, just come in and flick that switch and that'll start doing its thing. And right at the end here is the sort of isolator switch for your room heater. So if that is off, you won't be able to run your room heater on 240 volt at all. That's when you won't get the green light. So if you're not getting the green light, just come under here and check that is on. So right underneath the seat on the other side of the van. Um, so right down here, this is the isolator switch for your solar panel. Um, so you'll only ever really need to turn that off if you're going to be changing your battery. Um, so you can just come in. Flick that off, sort your battery out, come in and then turn that back on. And then just down this other end, so this grey unit here is your Truma water heater. You don't really need to do anything with it under here, it just does its own thing. Um, the only thing is just down here, this wee yellow lever. Um, so when you're wanting to use the water heater, you'll just have that switch down. And then when you're storing the van or not using it for a while, come in and flick this switch up. And that just drains all the water out of your water heater so it stops any pipes freezing or bursting or anything like that. Just make sure that when you go to use the van again you do come in and flick that down. Um, nothing awful is going to happen if you don't. It just means all your fresh water is going to pump through the system and straight back out the floor of the van onto the ground. And then right in the far corner here is your 12 volt fuses if you ever need to get to them. So just in the cupboard um, above all your heater controls, this is your solar panel controller. Um, you don't need to do anything with this. Again, this does its own thing. Um, but next to it up here, you've got a wee remote meter which tells you everything you need to know. So you'll notice there's a wee sun right in the corner here. Um, that just means that the panel is charging the battery. As you can see, you've got the wee dashes going to your battery to show that it's being charged. When there's a wee moon, it means the system is still connected, just that there's not enough sun for the battery to be charged. Um, so you've got this wee select button, so you can see how many volts you're getting off your panel, how charged your battery is, so at 100%. Um, and then the next three are different amperes, um, wattages, bits and pieces. Um, this is the degrees of your controller. And then the last screen is an error screen. So if you ever feel like something's not quite right, just check this. Um, obviously E0 means there's nothing wrong. If there is a different number there between sort of 1 and 13, um, there is a wee booklet that'll explain each fault and how to fix that. And then if you just press select again, it'll bring you back to the main menu. So this here is the control panel for your fridge. So you just press and hold to turn it on. Give it a wee second to think about it. So on the left here is your sort of mode selector. So you've got 240 volt mains power, so you just pop it on that and as long as you're plugged in, the fridge will do its thing. You've got battery. So this isn't currently wired up, hence the wee error code in the spanner. So what you can do is get the van and your vehicle wired with a 12 pin trailer plug um, and that'll just keep so that's designed that it'll keep the fridge cool as you travel. So you'll have to, the night before, cool your fridge right down on either gas or mains power. And then when you hook the van up, you can switch it to battery and that'll just keep your fridge cool. Um, so if that's something you want to do, you can get that done with an auto electrician. And then the last mode is gas. So you'll select gas, um, there'll be sort of a two second delay and then you'll start to hear the fridge tick. So that's it igniting. Um, 
once the ticking stops you'll know it's ignited if a wee number nine comes up with a spanner that means it hasn't ignited properly so you just need to turn the fridge off and then just go and check your gas bottles are full and connected and then on the right hand side here you've just got your wee thermostat so you just click that up and down um, to adjust the temperature so here we've got your grill your, your hob your grill and your oven so just lift this glass right back um, so you've got your wee, your mains power one there which is just like your oven at home just select that and then for your other three gas burners much like a barbecue you've got to push and turn to sort of the highest flame and hit your igniter so that'll light that and then you can just adjust the temperature from there so that igniter ignites all your elements your grill and your oven so those three are for the range top and then similar again push and turn hit that igniter for your grill so with your grill um, you've just got a wee might be a bit hard to see you've just got a wee barrel that's where the flames come out of for that and then for your oven it just ignites along the back there with that silver rail now one thing to know with the cooktop is before you put this glass lid down just make sure these elements and these wires are cool to the touch because it has been known if you do put this glass down when they're still hot it will shatter so this is the inside of your toilet um, so your toilet bowl does rotate um, just so you can get it out of the way when you don't need it um, open that up so at the back here this blue button is your flush um, so there's no water in the, in the moment but it just flushes around there um, there's a wee grey handle just at the side here so that opens up into your cassette um, so you can flush everything away and then just close that again now do make sure that this grey handle is in the closed posi position before you go to remove that cassette um, because it's only designed for that toilet cassette to be removed when this is closed um, so if you don't have it closed you could risk damaging the system